Hello and welcome back to my channel. If you don't know me, I'm Danielle and I'm all about helping you live your best life. And if you don't notice, we're in a little bit of a different room today. We're in my office. So um, you can see behind me is where I do all of my best work. My bookcase here. And yes, 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 yes. But my guest bedroom is getting just a little bit neglected right now because... I don't know, I just keep rearranging everything. So it's kind of bare. Yeah, it's whatever. I hope that you are getting out of your house now that um, different stay at home orders are being lifted here in Michigan. Finally, we're allowed to go out and be in stores again. So I'm thankful for that. And I just really hope that you're all being safe and that you are healthy. Today we're talking all about plants. So we're talking like if you want to be a crazy plant lady, this video is for you. I've been playing this plant game for a while now. They've always just like given me life <laughs> to have plants. So I've learned a few things along the way and this year we are in a house that we plan on being in for a long time. So I've just really like put a lot more time and effort to have a lot of plants in the most affordable way. <laughs> because plants can be expensive. I usually get the little potted plants at like Meyer that are like four or five dollars, but even that adds up and those are just little. I have some tips for you just to kind of like help you get started um, for like no money or a little money. Stick around to the end of this video and you will be surprised at how many plants you can have with a little bit of money. If the idea of having plants sounds great to you but then also scary, my number one tip for you is to stick with just like one or two low maintenance plants. I will link below a blog post that I did last fall, I think, all about like plants of steel that you cannot eat, like even you can't kill. And also on top of that, they're safe for your pets because anytime you're going to buy a plant that is going to be around any pets that you have, make sure that they're not toxic to especially like cats and dogs that like to chew on everything, right? So I always Google like, hey, is this blank plant toxic to cats and dogs and then that way I know that if they do happen to chew it it's going to be okay not the best still but okay so stick with just one or two kinds of plants and really learn how to do those plants okay so my top three to this day my top three plants are snake plants spider plants and rubber plants Okay, now rubber plants are not actually made out of rubber, but the texture kind of feels like rubber. They're all live plants. We'll get to fake plants later. But all of these are real plants, and they're just all super low maintenance, very hardy. Like, it takes a lot to kill them. They have survived more than you can imagine. Okay, I always tell people my snake plant has traveled with us from Chicago to all four places we've lived in Michigan like it's insane but it's lived in high light and low light and I don't water it for weeks at a time <laughs> I heard the other day that snake plants are actually a form of cactus cacti cactus I don't know so I don't maybe that's why but they all work great and like if you water them too much or too little it's okay they're going to be just fine whereas some other plants are so finicky that you spend a lot of money on them and then you kill them and <laughs> it's not fun for anybody. So pick a couple plants that you know will work for you. So look up low light plants if you don't have a lot of light. Look up um, non-toxic to pets, right? Um, things like that. My other tip for you if you are that person who has the brown thumb or just like cannot keep anything alive, you might think I'm going to say succulents because everyone says that succulents are the easiest plants, no one can kill them. Um, excuse you, I kill like every succulent I've ever owned because like you can't water it too much, you can't water it too little, and it's just too finicky for me. So one option for you could be to adopt some fake plants. Now, I have always been so against fake plants because so many plants are good for the environment, like they're um, cleansing to the air. They have, they do a lot of good 
for your home. However, if you have just like a plant that you love the look of, but you can't have it in your house because you'll kill it or your, your pets will kill it or it'll hurt your pets or whatever reason, go for fake plants because honestly, they look so real nowadays. <laughs> I sound so old when I say that, but like they look really realistic now and I think that it's a great option. I have a couple of fake succulents um, that I really like and I have them in a place where I wouldn't normally be able to put a succulent because they're toxic to animals and because there's not enough light there. But I get to have one because it's fake. And succulents are especially good for fake plants because they do look so realistic because of the texture of an actual succulent looks almost fake. Have you ever like looked at a succulent like is this real? It's a whole thing. Another way I love to use fake plants is like draping plants. Okay, so think like ivy or another type of plant that usually drapes. Another plant that I just love the look of is eucalyptus. When we were in college, I bought eucalyptus from Trader Joe's like every single week because I loved the smell of it. I love to hang it in the shower um, because then when it's steamy, the smell it comes out and it's good for you. But it's really toxic to cats and dogs. So when we moved to Michigan and got a cat, I wasn't able to have eucalyptus anymore and it was such a bummer. So what I do is I bought some fake eucalyptus from Hobby Lobby, which was very expensive, but anyway, it looks really nice, and so I get that look. And then, as far as the smell, I use um, I get candles that are eucalyptus, or I also have some aromatherapy eucalyptus stress relief from Bath and Body Works. I like their lotion a lot, and their um, and their sugar scrub. If you are somebody who can keep plants alive, then don't worry, I have something for you too. So I already mentioned buying just like cheap little plants from Meyer or wherever you shop for groceries and um, Lowe's has them on clearance a lot. I'm sure like Home Depot and Menards probably does too. Or wherever you have around you, look for plants and just like the small plastic pots and then you can do so much with just that. Certain plants you can multiply and propagate, and then other plants you can also get and separate after they grow. Okay, so after they multiply, you can separate them and have more plants. So four or so years ago, I bought three big rubber plant like hanging baskets from the store, and they did well, they moved three different houses with us, and I just this year was like, they are not doing well, I need to do something for them. So I ended up repotting them. I talked about it on my Instagram story like a week or two ago, but they are thriving now, like they look so good. So it got me on a rule of <laughs> doing that with all my plants. So I will also link a video above and below of a propagation video for succulents. So basically propagation, if you don't know, is taking parts of of a plant and then making more plants out of the parts so kind of think like plant babies like there's the mother plant and then there's the plant babies snake plants also do this if they're in the right environment my snake plant spent too many years in a very small pot so it's tightly packed and I didn't think I could pull it apart to separate it without breaking the roots so I didn't get to take any baby plants off of that one, unfortunately. So I just put it in a bigger pot and it'll get really big, which is fine. Spider plants also multiply a lot. Again, I'm not the nicest to my spider plants, so it does not give me spider plant babies. But hopefully I've been trying to mother it a little more so that it gives me babies. <laughs> it's so weird. Okay, my last tip for you, and this one especially is good for outside like landscaping plants, is ask your family members or friends or just post it up on Facebook if anybody has plant babies that they need to get rid of. Plants like hostas or irises, they multiply like crazy outside. So I just bought a ton of hostas and I will link that video above and below of my plant haul for this year and I go to my mother-in-law's and she's like why like never buy hostas again I have a million that I just throw in the woods so I had no idea about this <laughs> but her hostas she has them around her house and they just 
like little baby hostas pop up all the time and she's like you can have as many as you want like take 50 and so definitely never buying hostas again <laughs> so ask around ask if anyone has plants they need to get rid of or if they have plant babies that you can have so these are my best tips to help you just make your whole house green i hope that you can take something from this video if you did give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet i love you lots bye